Hi everyone, this is Mr. Van, uh, making a video to talk about something that's on a lot of teachers and I know is about to be on a lot of students' minds, um, and it's called provisional final marks and the interim marks that are going out as part of our, our regular May plan, but that look pretty significantly different um, this year with COVID. Um, so in order to help make sure everyone has good information and is able to feel uh, encouraged and motivated for the remainder of the school year, I thought it might be helpful to make this. All right, let's begin. So first thing is, uh, what is a provisional final mark and why do you care? Um, it may get abbreviated as a PFM. Some of your teachers may already be talking about it. You're going to see them in, uh, in bulk pretty soon here. Basically, a provisional final mark is the lowest mark that uh, you will be able to get this year. It's, uh, it comes from, um, as it says here, uh, accumulation of marks in term one and term two. I'll show you some examples in a second, but generally speaking, it's going to be all of the work you've done cumulatively together, what is your average mark? That mark will go on to your term three interim and you'll be able to see it this Friday, May the 8th, um, by logging into MyEd. And if you're stuck on getting logged in into MyEd, um, I've got the password reset form for you at the end of this. Again, it represents the lowest mark you can have. So this answers the question of the baseline many students are asking about. Yes, whatever you see as the final mark on your interim report card is the lowest it can be this year. Your term three mark can certainly shoot it up. And I'm gonna talk about reasons why you might wanna make sure it does, but uh, this will represent the baseline or lowest it can be. Um, Okay, also coming out this Friday is going to be term three interims. So um, teachers may give a mark for term three interims. They may also leave it blank. You will see a comment and comments are gonna be really helpful for students. They're going to explain how teachers got to that. And I would certainly encourage you to check with teachers. And if you can't connect with a teacher, let me know and I'll help with that to find out how any of your PFMs were calculated if you're unsure. Um, the term three interim will be separate in a different column than the PFM. So again, I'll show this uh, right now. So here are two student examples that I've just pulled uh, from report cards today that'll be, uh, that are already ready to go. Um, if you go into my, you will be able to see some of your provisional final marks already, um, but most of them are still coming because it's Monday and this is a four day job for teachers. It's a big job. Um, so let's look at our student number one here. As you can see, um, I've highlighted two spots for term three and for uh, the F for final. The uh, final category is where we are putting in the provisional final mark. Um, there may be a mark in term three. This particular student does not. It's gonna be up to the teacher whether or not to include it. I can tell the teacher has um, already put the information in though because we do see a provisional final of 97. And I also do see a work habit of good in term three. So this one is complete and the teachers opted to not include a percent for term three. That's gonna be, I'm imagining pretty standard across most classes, but teachers can put a mark in if they would like. Um, What's notable about this one, uh, what this report card is really saying for student number one is that 97 will be the lowest that their mark can uh, can be. Um, so it's not, not a lot of improvement for this particular kid. Um, and also we can see how it was averaged. If you look at the 99 in first term and the 97 in second, we would expect an average if they hadn't already been um, average together to be 98. So because the teachers put 97, we can tell that term two was already a cumulative mark. And so they've just dragged their term two mark into the provisional final column. And that's where we get. The second student is an example of um, what I think more of our teachers do in this school, which is having term marks and then averaging them together. You can see in term one, the student had 86. In term two, the student had 68. Uh, unfortunately, in term three, and we'll come back to this in a second, um, there is an I, but the I does not affect the provisional final mark. And you can see the provisional final mark is 77, which if you take 86 and 68, is the exact average. Um, it's right in the, it's the middle number between those two. So add up the two terms, divide by two, and bam, you get 77. Some teachers may weigh terms differently. So it is possible that you won't have a number for a class that is right in the middle. And you'll be able to tell just by doing the same calculation I explained to you. Um, what you can guarantee is that the provisional final mark will rest between the two marks. Um, it, it, 
has to by nature of uh, both of them being given any value at all. So you will expect your provisional final mark to be um, either uh, like student one, uh, the second term, or like student two, an average of the two terms, term one and term two. Again, term three does not count. The provisional final mark is only from all work and done up until spring break at the end of term two. The other thing to know with this particular student is indeed they do have an I in term three, and that's going to pop up in the frequently asked questions when we get there in a minute. Okay, thanks. Now I wanted to talk, this is kind of the most important piece from the counseling perspective, I think for me, um, on staying connected and motivated. Um, I think the first thing I really want to touch on is, is the importance of building normalcy and connection uh, in a unique time to support your mental health. And I'm talking to a lot of students who are really struggling with their mental health right now, and I'm noticing that a number of them are finding the motivation to be really challenging. Um, and I, I, I'll start by saying I get it. Like, it's, it's hard to stay motivated when your prime motivation for so long has been getting the grade, and now you're being told, well, the grade's already there. I've already done the work. I mean, I could say, maybe we want to look at it differently and say, well done for getting there. Now let's talk about education for education's sake, learning for learning's sake. Um, and I think it's really important to stay connected to your teachers, especially the ones that you've built a relationship that's been really positive with all year. Um, your mental health is, is more than just your schooling. It's the summation of everything in your, in your life. And being able to keep connected and have some normalcy will help uh, improve your day-to-day -day mental health for however long this carries on for. The second thing I want to talk about is the idea of post-secondary competitive. Um, there's going to be an interesting situation when people go to apply to universities um, next year with with the grade 11 cohort in that uh, as, as you everyone knows we use grade 11 and 12 marks um, and your basis is not uh, your basis for admission is not based on hitting a certain number but it's based on your competitiveness to other students so if you are that student who had um, an I in term three, uh, you've got a lot to play for there. Getting that mark up could really help boost your chances of having a great grade 11 mark to show those post-secondaries. You know what, you might have a mark that's good enough, but next year might be more competitive when a whole bunch of other people went and raised their marks. We're gonna see a high average for grade 11 marks next year when, grade, when the current grade 11s are applying for post-secondary. So to stay competitive, you need to be thinking about raising your own marks as well. And then the third part um, is just thinking about what you're going to be taking next year. I know a lot of people are taking classes and there's going to be um, things that you're going to need to know from this year. And I know that a lot of teachers are going to have the challenging job of reteaching some of what would have been in their grade uh, before classes at the start of, of next year. Uh, assuming we are in fact back, I hope, uh, for the start of the school year in September. In order to be as prepared as possible for what's going to be an even more important year for all of our grade uh, 8, 9, 10, and 11 students, it's really important to think about making sure that you're ready for next year. And I think about this not necessarily just in terms of having a good mark, but understanding concepts. I personally wouldn't necessarily care if you never got one more percent on your math and you took whatever you had now and provided your doing okay, and took that, but that you knew some of the concepts going in, um, and that, that applies to everything, uh, electives as well. You want to understand the core concepts of this course, so I'd encourage people to stay connected for that reason. Just really quickly touching on some frequently asked questions. Um, what happens if I get an I in term three, but I was passing? So this was that second example we looked at a minute ago. You would be fine. You will pass the course. Um, you. If you don't remedy that, you won't be able to do better and you'll lose some of your competitiveness, but you will still pass the course. An I in term three is something to deal with, but it's not something that will actually stop you from passing the course, regardless of how you deal with it. It's, I think it's important to be honest about that. Um, and some tips for staying motivated. Um, I've been talking to a lot of students and uh, thank you to the ones who've already got back to me and talked about how things have been working or not working. Um, but some things we're noticing already is that schedules have been really helpful, being realistic about your time and how much you're on the screen. Um, using this as an opportunity to push yourself and to really engage in subjects that you, and with teachers that you really have a passion and shared interest with. Um, it truly, like I said before, is, is learning for learning's sake in many ways. 
And I think it's also important, as I say at the bottom here, to be honest with your teachers and share creative ideas. I'm continually impressed with how some students have let me know they've got ideas for how they could demonstrate some of the things they're learning in class in a way that engages with them that their teacher maybe hadn't even thought about. Share that with them. Um, I think teachers are being, you know, we're naturally open-minded anyways, and I think we're increasingly open-minded now. So I'd encourage you to really be creative about how you could maybe engage in the material, even if the teacher hasn't thought about it yet. Remember, they're making all of this up on the fly. They're not used to teaching like this. So there's a great opportunity here, I would say. Um, and then the last thing for those of you who on Friday um, are looking to go and see your PFMs and you're like, ah, oh, crap, my ad locked out. If you go to mrvan.org and under the Van Tech specific tab, you can go and you can find the password reset and that'll bring you to the page that you can either reset your team's account uh, or you can reset your my ad. And it goes directly to our two vice principals, uh, Ms. R and Ms. Calder, and they will fix it for you. Okay, please make sure to uh, let me know if you have any uh, questions or comments, any follow-ups, and uh, sending, sending our best from the counseling department.